each other in the name of the Lord this morning. Smile, wave, touch an elbow, whatever you're comfortable with. Merry Christmas or happy Thanksgiving, either one. Good morning. Good morning. Do I get to meet some more people today? Kathy, nice and to meet you. My dad's sister, my aunt Marge. Nice to meet you, Marge. And we met last week, right? Yes. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks for coming. I'm excited to see how many you bring next week. Every week it's growing. It'll just be my mom. Oh, that's all right. They may be so overwhelmed they want to stay. Could be. Welcome to worship at First Reformed Church. I have a handful of announcements to go through before we get started this morning, um, including today we're going to be remembering uh, all our hunters who are out this morning. We had a good batch at the Hunter's Blessing and Breakfast this morning. A large group of, of folks turned out for biscuits and gravy and cinnamon rolls and a short worship and communion. Uh, we are also taking communion here this morning, and uh, we are not passing the plates, but we are and I know this will disappoint many of you, we are going back to normal communion and away from the travel communion. Although we do have a couple hundred travel communion cups left. If anybody really wants to take some of that home, we'll part with a few. Uh, but here's how we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to have everybody, everybody come down the middle aisle. We're going to have a, a set of elders here, a set of elders here. And we'll start with the middle sections, with the front rows, they'll nod, and then you just watch the rows ahead of you, come down the middle aisle, pick which direction seems easiest, and then head back up the aisle to go back to your seat. After the middle sections are served, then the side sections are served, and anyone uh, who has professed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is uh, offered to come forward and take communion. Um, Sunday school, the Consistory Room Adult Sunday School class will meet today. The other one, the Letters from a Skeptic, will not meet today, as Doug and Wayne are both gone today. Uh, what else? There will be Christmas program for the kids, um, pre-K all the way up through uh, fifth grade in here, as well as high schoolers, if there are any that want to participate in here. We've got some readings for them. Uh, that'll be five minutes after church ends and probably go to 11.15. Um, Bible study this week, Toys for Tots. Tomorrow is the last day to, if you know a family that would like to register for Toys for Tots. Um, and we have uh, until a week from today to bring toys. And our box is already overflowing, which is awesome. Um, so we would just encourage anybody who still wants to do some shopping this week, we're looking for toys for kids up through age uh, 14 boys and girls. You can just bring them and drop them off at the box until next week on this day. That is almost all I have. We are doing, so on the 12th, which is a week from today, we have our Christmas program during the service. After the service, we're doing a pizza lunch in the fellowship hall. You're encouraged to bring your favorite Christmas treat or dessert for a Christmas treat potluck, uh, which there is. You can, if you haven't seen it yet, there is a trophy out on the mailboxes. We'll vote for the best Christmas treat or dessert. And we're also having what was formerly known as an ugly sweater contest. Someone said to me, my sweater's not ugly. I think it's pretty. That's why I bought it. We're going to re redub it creative Christmas sweater contest. If you're, it's beautiful, great. If it has jangly bells, great. If it's Terribly ugly, that's great too, um, and there will be some secret judges who judge the greatest one. We have a trophy for that as well. Also, uh, keeping the fun going even a week beyond that, uh, the following week on the 19th, we're going to have a prize for the First Reformed Church 2021 Christmas, Christmas Movie Madness. It is a March Madness style bracket, but it's all Christmas movies, and uh, you need to take this fill it out and return it to the church, and then the person who scores the most points after it's turned in, after they're all turned in, will get a ridiculous prize that's not valuable, but it's fun. 
Um, and a couple of people have said, how exactly does this work? It's so very simple. Uh, for instance, the top left, it says, It's a Wonderful Life versus The Bishop's Wife. Which Christmas movie do you like better? Which one would you prefer? Which one do you think is more popular? That's the winner. And then you pair that up with the next winner and the next winner and the next winner until you come up with the ultimate Christmas movie winner. And for those of you who say, I haven't seen most of these, we use the internet and found out how they were ranked. So there are numbers next to them. If you say to yourself, I've never seen White Christmas, it's ranked number two in the classic section. So you still have a pretty good idea how it's going to do. Um, so yeah, those are out on the Fellowship Paul table. Grab one of those as well. I think that's all the announcements I have. Does anybody else have any business or announcements before we get started? Scott. Ooh. Sweet. Breadline had quite a bit left cookies after the service due to the excess of the breadline. Other business or announcements? Jerry. Junior High will be in here this morning as well. Okay. Excellent. Middle school youth has their white elephant Christmas exchange tonight. What time does it start? Six o'clock? Six o'clock here at the church, junior high white elephant exchange. Other business or announcements? If not, I would invite the uh, musicians to come forward. I would invite you to stand together, take one more chance to greet those around you, and let's open in worship this morning. Let's stand and worship the Lord together.
to invite up the Striegel family this morning to light our Advent candle. Candles. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. On the second Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of faith and in doing so we remember all of the people like shepherds who need help in knowing their lives. They wait quietly, they wait patiently, they put their hope in God as that his plan will one day be revealed to them. Okay. Thank you, Striegels.
number of familiar prayer concerns on the list this morning. Again, we'll remember the hunters as they are out uh, enjoying God's creation. Uh, continuing to pray for Kurt and Alicia Bryles. Uh, Kurt said he's got an MRI coming up to see how things are going, so we'll keep that in our prayers. Continuing to pray for Arvin Vanderlinden, uh, Bonnie's ankle, uh, Dave's treatments as he goes back and forth to Iowa City. Lauren Brewers, who is at home. I don't know if Margie's here this morning. I didn't see her come in. I don't have my glasses on, so wave if you're here. And then uh, I do see Sandy. Um, the last I'd heard about Herman, uh, but I haven't heard in the last 24 hours, was that he's doing better and hopefully soon moving on to uh, his next location for therapy, but still at Lutheran for the current time. But he's had a good 24, 48 hours, and that's what he needs to, to move on to the next place. So, perfect. So we'll be continuing to pray for uh, Lauren uh, as he recovers at home, and uh, Herman as he looks to hopefully uh, move to his next location for physical therapy. And then uh, also praying for a friend of uh, Mary Catherine's. I always want to call you Miss Mary Catherine, but I catch myself every time. But to just say Mary Catherine feels odd to me. We're praying for a friend of Miss Mary Catherine's um, who uh, uh, has, okay, necrotic pancreatitis. And are they still in the hospital? Oh, good. Excellent. Uh, was in the hospital with necrotic pancreatitis, but now is at home recovering much earlier than they even thought. So we'll continue to pray that uh, the pain and the recovery, uh, uh, pain's over soon and the recovery comes quick. I think that's all the prayer concerns I have or joy. Does anyone else have anything to share this morning before we pray? Yeah, Carrie. Just because people have been asking, um, we got mom and dad moved. Um, the house is empty. I'll tell you, 48 years worth of stuff. Not the word I've been using all week, but you know. <laughs> so we'll, I'll pray for forgiveness today on that. All right. <laughs> anyway, 48 years worth of stuff is a lot and hard. Um, but anyway, they're settled in their apartments. The house is empty. Um, they're supposed to close Friday. There's a little delay. Nothing like just mortgage company being a mortgage company. Um, so it's fine. So they're going to close on Wednesday. Yeah, we're good. Would you say the mortgage company has been doing stuff? Yes. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yes. And it's Carol and Judy? Carol and Judy. Carol and Judy. Excellent. Thank you. We'll be praying for them. You bet. We'll continue to pray for them that the uh, mortgage company gets their stuff together and uh, this goes through quickly and smoothly. Other joys or concerns this morning before we pray? All right, if not, I'd invite you to grab the hand of somebody sitting next to you. Uh, if you're alone, grab your other hand. We remember this morning, especially with our hunters gone, that the hands we hold are not just our own, but they are our deer hunters walking through the farms and the fields and the, the, the woods this morning. They are those at home recovering or in the hospital. They are those traveling today uh, to be with family or for sports. We will raise them all up in prayer this morning as we hold one another's hands. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you heard our prayers this morning. We prayed for blessing over all of our hunters, not only of this congregation, but of this community as they head out to enjoy your creation this morning. Lord, you have given us uh, a string of really great days to be out and enjoy all you have given us. Lord, we celebrated this morning that you bestowed this earth and everything in it as a blessing to your children. Lord, may we take care of it, keep our brothers and sisters safe as they are out this morning, and uh, Lord, let them come home with a beautiful harvest, but most of all, a soul filled with good fellowship and exercise and stories and just time together uh, spent with you. God, we come to you this morning, the second week of Advent, and we remember uh, sometimes it takes a while for faith to be answered. Lord, we bring 
many names to you every week, knowing that you already know these names and care for these names. But Lord, hear our hearts as we raise them up again, because Lord, we know that you answer prayers. We know that you hear our petitions. We know that you just like hearing our voices as we recognize that people we love are in need. Lord, we continue to pray for Herman, that you would give him another clear and healthy 24 hours so that the next bed he takes would bring him closer to recovery. Lord, keep him safe. Be with Catherine. Give her rest. Uh, be with Sandy and the kids as they uh, continue to pray and watch over him. Lord, be with the doctors and the nurses that tend him daily. Lord, we pray for Lorne. Uh, continued patience for him as he recovers at home. God, we would pray that you would uh, just rid his body of that infection and make him stronger and healthier uh, than before. God, we continue to pray for those who are in the midst of treatments. Dave and Arvin. Lord, we know that you uh, ride with them in their cars, sit with them in the morning as they have their coffee. You are with them as they lay awake at night. You are with them when they are sleeping. Lord, we know that you are with them as they receive their treatments as well. Lord, we would pray that they would uh, be touched by your hands to do the healing that they need to do. Lord, we continue to pray for Bonnie and her ankle, that you would continue to heal it uh, and give her the rest and the strength that she needs. Lord, we continue to lift up Kurt to you. Lord, we would pray that he would uh, respond to his treatments. We would pray that he would heal and recover. Lord, most of all, we would pray that you would strengthen his soul and give him comfort and patience in those moments when he is frustrated. Lord, we thank you for answered prayers with Mary Catherine's friend. Lord, we would pray deeply that he would recover at home just as quickly as he did in the hospital, that you would continue to surprise his doctors with the way that he heals and feels better. And Lord, continue to hear our prayers for Carol and Judy as they go through this major milestone in life of saying goodbye to a house. Lord, we know that uh, the real home is with their family, and we know that they have a family surrounding them that will remind them uh, that they are known and loved. So Lord, just be with them as all the I's get dotted and T's get crossed and all the financial stuff is figured out with the house. God, we come to you this morning and we would ask again uh, for you to give us reminders to just slow down in this season of Advent to pause and to listen to your voice. Lord, we know that as Christmas gets closer, it seems like the days speed up. We can't wait for Christmas break. We can't wait for uh, spring. We can't wait for family get-togethers. We can't wait to get our shopping done. We can't wait for Christmas morning. Lord, so often we think all of these things that we can't wait for need to happen so soon, and yet when the season is over, we have failed to stop and just reflect in the moment. Lord, give us the hearts of the shepherds on the hill who spent months, if not years, just silently waiting on you to hear the good news that a baby had come, that they may rejoice and know that they are known and loved and forgiven and called to follow you. God, in this second week of Advent, if there is anything we have said or done, any sins we have committed, anything that has been done to us that distracts us from your voice, anything that drags our attention away from praising your name or hearing your word, Lord, we take a moment of silence now to offer those things to you.
Father, as we close this prayer, we use the words that your son Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Children are invited forward for the children's message this morning. Come on down. We're going to sit over here on this side. Oh, thank you. Raise your hand if you happen to have quarters to hand to the kids. We did a total this week, and I already forget what the number was, but we're well over $300 towards warm blankets for kids. So if you've got more quarters, there's a hand back there. There's a hand back there. Can you go grab quarters? Look for hands raised. Oh my goodness, look at these bags of quarters. This is awesome. Thank you, thank you. Come on over this way, guys. Scoot down this way. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, there's room, there's room. There's plenty of room. Come on down, come on down. Oh my goodness gracious, look at all these quarters coming in for blankets for people who need warm blankets. This is, we did, I do remember we did dimes and they were so full. Here, come on down this way, guys. Everybody come down this way. We're going to stay as far away from the open flame as possible. Ella, Ella, can you lead them over this way? We'll come sit down right here in front of me. Come on down this way, guys. Oh, any more quarters? Any more quarters? Oh, there's a few more. All right, grab a seat. Grab a seat. Thank you. Do I hear any more? Okay. Okay. First things first, if you were not here this last week or you forgot to get it last week, we have nativities, one for every family, for your parents to grab after worship, there's stickers and there's an activity sheet that tells you exactly where to stick the stickers on the back. Do you have to do it exactly like it tells you to? No. no. You're going to? Yeah. In my house, when my kids were little, I have a feeling that like the wise men might have been sitting on top of the stable for fun. I don't know. But you guys can do what you want. You already have one? That's perfect. If you don't have one, they're right here in the front pew. Make sure you get one per family so we have enough for everybody, okay? Oh, yes, yes. You can keep it on your fridge. You can keep it by the Christmas tree. This one's yours? Perfect. I will save it right back here for your folks after church. Oh, you got one. You already got one. Yeah, perfect. All right. Now... Who remembers, we just heard a Bible story from uh, Timothy and Emily and William's family. Does anybody remember what the Bible story was about? No? no. no? Does this help? Yes. What's this? Eagles. Sheeps? Who's watching the sheep? The shepherds. The shepherds. There are shepherds watching over their sheep, but they're not looking at the sheep, are they? No. What are they looking at? <laughs> the sky. The sky. What are they looking at in the sky? Where are the angels? I don't know. They're very looking at There's no angels. Because they're vanished. Well, no, they haven't been drawn yet. This is your assignment this week, is when we, uh, after we pray to take your colors and take your sheets, and you get to draw the angels that the shepherds see, the angels that showed up and said, there is a baby Jesus on the way. And like always, if you want to give me your sheet after you're done to hang up in the window, I'll hang it up. Otherwise, you can take it home. I'm but you're going to give it to me? Oh, I love it. I love hanging colored sheets up on the windows out there. And then today, after church, we're going to have Christmas program practice. And this is very important. Even if a child has not been here for a single day of practice yet, we can plug him right in. Even if somebody shows up next week during the program, well, not during the program, we try, I guess, but next Sunday morning, we can plug somebody in even on that Sunday morning into the Christmas program because we've tried to make it that easy. And there's one more thing we got to do. And that one more thing is, oh, Ava, 
It took them forever to find the boat last week. They looked and they looked and they looked and I finally had to say over there and then they looked and they looked and I finally had to say in the pew and then they looked and I was kind of like next to the hymnal and then they found it. And who was it, Brooks, that hit it last week? Beckham. 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 Beckham hit it last week. I don't know what it is. And here's what I'm going to say. We've got to be careful today. It is nowhere near the candles over there. Huh. Is it in here? It is behind me. Wait, wait. Nowhere near the candles. Wait, wait. Nowhere near this table of things. But it is somewhere. Wait, wait. It is, so, it is, yes, okay, so come on up, careful, nice and careful, this is, somebody asked last week, this is a fake candle right here, it is not, a, neither is that a real candle, but it is somewhere kind of up in this area, look, wah, <laughs> Beckham, is that where you hit it? Right there on the organ, perfect, all right, go grab a seat again, go grab a seat, it was over here on the organ, kind of behind that, um, that fake candle lamp by the nativity. Uh-oh. We tumbled. We tumbled. Come on down. Come on down. Who remembers? Now, here's the big test. Who remembers why we have the boat every week? I explain it every week. Oh, we think we finally have someone who remembers. Me. Don't remember. Do you remember? She remembers. They use boats in church to symbolize that we are all on a boat, on a journey together, and we're all going towards who? Jesus. Jesus on Christmas Evan, morning. Evan, 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 Evan. No, 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 not him. We're going to Jesus, are we? So, next week or today, maybe after we practice, McCoy gets to hide the boat somewhere in the sanctuary. It could be anywhere except near open flames, okay? No candles, but otherwise you could put it out there somewhere. You could hand it to somebody who's going to be here next week. We don't know, okay? All right, so we're going to pray, and then uh, you, you got to find it to hide it. Then uh, would you help me pass out colors, though? We now, we have a lot of kids. We might have to say one bag of colors per family, okay? So if a brother or sister gets a bag of colors, we have plenty of sheets, but I'm not sure about colors. So can we pray? Let's fold our hands. Close our eyes. Dear God, we remember this morning the shepherds who were so excited to hear the news that baby Jesus had come. God, as we think about the fact we're all on a big boat together heading towards Christmas, we are also excited that baby Jesus had come. We are also excited that it means that you truly love us so much. You want us to be your own children. So God, this morning as we color in those angels and color in those shepherds, we remember that when Jesus came, it was good news for everyone. We pray this in your name. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right. He'll pass out. Yes, you can pass out the color. There's some and I'll hand out some. Here we go. Oh, one at a time, one at a time. I would invite our musicians to come up as we sing our next hymn together. It came upon a midnight clear. Would you stand as we continue worship this morning?
Our first scripture today comes from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 25 through 26. And we will read it together as a congregation. Would you read with me from the book of Lamentations? The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 3 through 7, I will read to you. Would you hear the words from the book of John 13, 3 through 7? Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Faith is the ability to not understand or not know what is coming next, but to trust that God is in control and has a plan. It is the same faith that the shepherds would have had out in the field as they had waited their whole lives, not even knowing that a baby was coming, but just knowing and hoping and praying that God had a plan for a Messiah someday. It was the same hope that the disciples had, not knowing Jesus was about to die having faith that he had a plan, a plan that when it did go into action, they panicked and ran because they did not understand what was going on. Jesus even says at the end, you're not going to get this. This may not make sense. This is something that I'm doing that you will understand later. I thought that passage today, since it comes on the night uh, that Jesus uh, starts communion with his followers, and we're taking communion today, it fit perfectly because it has the same theme that comes with Christmas. Many people were shocked and appalled and confused that when the Messiah finally arrived, he didn't come on a horse with an army like they had thought. He came as a baby. And that made no sense to 99.999% of people who heard it. Why would God choose to start his ministry on earth in this way as a baby? What sense does it possibly make? What sense did it make that hours before Jesus was to die, he went off with his friends to an upper room. He did not go out in the streets and give a big speech. He did not try to pull in as many followers to hear his words as possible. He had a private moment with friends where they shared a meal and then when they were anxious and worked up and ready to do something, he made them stop and sit and be served. Birth, death, both happened in a way that the people around him said, I don't get it. One of my theories about why God did what he did is because when babies come into the world, Life changes drastically. I would say before we had kids, we had life fairly well figured out. We knew where most of the aspects of our life fell into place. We knew that, for instance, when Christmas arrived, Andrea was the rapper. She wraps presents more beautifully than I do. We understood probably who was in charge of cooking, who was in charge of vacuuming, who was in charge of doing laundry, who was in charge of driving when we went places, who was in charge of making sure we were signed up for the right things we were signed up for in life, making sure we had shampoo in the shower and food in the fridge. We knew who was in charge, and then all of a sudden, Carson shows up, and who's in charge when you have a baby? The baby 
is always in charge. Everything changes to accommodate the baby. Everything changes to accommodate the baby. Carson was not a great sleeper. He only slept for the first few months if you held him, which meant four months to make sure that Andrea could get the sleep she needed between feedings. I would rock him in the Lazy Boy in our living room while I watched literally every Clint Eastwood movie except Paint Your Wagon with just the words at the bottom of the screen because we didn't want him to wake up. Everything revolved around making sure Carson got his sleep so Andrea could get her sleep so I could get my sleep. Nap time during the day. We would, at the beginning, put signs on the door. You will not be let in if the baby is asleep. Owen came, and when it was his nap time, I would hold Carson on my lap, and we'd quietly watch cartoons just to make sure that Owen could get the nap he needed when he was a baby. I remember one time coming back from a trip in South Dakota, and when we drove that trip from South Dakota to Iowa, which we did many times before we were married uh, and, and before we had kids, it's very different. We would just drive through, maybe stop once to get a meal, drive through. The moment you put a baby in the car, you stop. For instance, every time the baby has a blowout so big that you can't drive more than another mile without getting sick to your stomach. And I don't remember what town we, it was near maybe Morris, Iowa, that we had such a blowout. No spare wipes. It was out of the clothing. It was everywhere. And we just stood on the side of the road and our whole day was changed because the baby is the one in charge. How interesting is it that when God wanted to get our attention, wanted us to stop doing what we're doing, wanted us to pay closer attention to his kingdom, he did not send a warrior on a horse. He did not send a politician or a king. He sent a baby. To consider that these shepherds in the field whose full-time job was to 24 hours a day make sure someone was on watch for these sheep. You cannot leave the sheep's side for any reason. And yet, what trumped that was a baby. The baby shows up. The baby's in charge. Jesus, on the night before he was arrested, before he went to his trial, before he was hung on the cross, again, is not out in the streets healing, speaking, traveling, bringing in more followers. He makes his followers stop and pause and reflect. We're going to eat together, break bread together, share wine together, and then you are literally going to sit there and pause and reflect on God's nature as I wash your feet. Before so many major events in Scripture, God has instilled a moment where he says, slow down. Take a moment. Reflect on what's happening. Very fitting that at Christmas, the whole holiday is supposedly centered around a silent night. A baby in a manger, candlelight, food shared, serving one another. This is our time of the year where we stop and pause and reflect and slow down. One of the, uh, I'm, I'm trying to watch every movie on that Christmas list, so when I put my votes in for what's the best movie, I can get it right. So this weekend I watched The Bishop's Wife, the original one with Cary Grant, not the one with uh, Denzel Washington. Has anybody seen the original one with Cary Grant? Two. Three. Wow. It's ranked, I think, eighth, and it's up against It's a Wonderful Life. It's not going to win. But on my sheet, it may, because it has one of the most beautiful ice skating scenes I've ever seen on a, in a film before, 
where Cary Grant, who plays this angel, comes down to earth to uh, get David Niven, who's this uh, bishop of all these churches in New York. He comes to get him to slow down. He's trying to raise all this money for a new cathedral. In the meantime, there's a boys' choir, and there's uh, money to be raised for the needy, and there's the wife that he's ignoring, and the daughter that he's not paying attention to, and Cary Grant comes down to kind of get him to slow down. And there's one scene where uh, Cary Grant, the angel, and Loretta Young, who's playing David Niven's wife, are traveling in this taxi cab, and uh, the taxi cab driver who's involved in the ice skating scene, which you really should watch because it really is wonderful, uh, turns around and says, I'm going to tell you exactly what's wrong with the world. Nobody knows where they're going, and they're all going way too fast. And I heard that this weekend, and I went, oh, what a perfect message for Christmas. Everybody is in this extra rush to get everything non-Christmas related done so that when Christmas comes, we can hurry up and enjoy it. And then it's over too soon, and before you know it, all of this comes down, the nativities go away, and we're on to Easter. And yet it's so telling that when God wanted everybody's attention, wanted everybody to slow down, wanted everybody to take a deep breath and remember who was in charge, he did not send the warrior they expected. He sent the baby. Be quiet. Slow down. Remember from this point forward who's in charge of Christmas. You can rush around all you want, but if you do, you're going to miss the most important part. Today, as we take communion, you're reminded that this is just another opportunity in the coming weeks to slow down and reflect. We take communion because we believe Jesus Christ is in the room with us. Anytime two or more are gathered, he is here with us. That is an amazing reason to slow down and say, he is here. We take communion to remember his ministry. Remember the people he touched and healed. Remember the people that he spoke to. Most of all, remember the fact that he would draw people out of the crowd who thought they were worthless to remind them, I know you, I love you, I forgive you. I want you to follow me. An excellent moment to sit quietly and reflect. And third, we take communion because it shows us the hope of the feast to come. That one day when we are beyond this earth, when we have passed away and we are with God in his kingdom, there will be a feast that this will pale in comparison to. We heard in Revelation is there'll be no more crying, no more pain, no more fear, no more terror, no more sin, no more sadness. An excellent reason to slow down, be still, and remember who's in charge. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after they had eaten, he took the cup and said to them, this cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Remember this as often as you drink it. Everything is prepared. You have heard Christ's invitation. I would invite the elders to come forward as we take communion this morning.
rows. Have everybody come down the middle, exit to the sides, and head back to your seat. Today, after you've taken communion, we would like to give you a reminder to be still with God in this Advent season. After you've received your bread and received your juice on both sides of the elders, there are bowls with little wooden crosses that someone in our congregation has so lovingly donated to us. They are prayer crosses or worry crosses or love crosses. They are small and smooth and meant to slip into your pocket that every time you touch it, every time you see it in the bottom of your purse, every time you see it in the cup holder in your car, it gives you a moment to stop and reflect Be still. Remember what we're celebrating. Every cross also has a small card next to it you can grab that explains where it came from and what it was made of. We would invite the first rows to come on forward.
pray together. Heavenly Father, as we continue on through this Advent journey with you, we remember this morning that you have not called us to be busy. You have not called us to hurry. You have not called us to rush. You have called us to be still and to know. You have called us to attend the side of a manger, to gaze upon the infant, and to remember who's in charge. Father, as we share this communion with each other this morning, we remember that it is you who controls the world. It is you who has the plan, and it is our job to have faith, even when we do not know why things are happening, to trust that you do. Father, give us the faith of those shepherds. Give us the faith of Mary and Joseph. Give us the faith of those who know the best is yet to come. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. I would invite you to stand for your benediction and then our final hymn as we close in worship together. Would you stand? As you leave this house of worship today, I would invite you to remember to slow down. Take the moments, hold your cross, and remember who has our full and undivided attention. Go in peace. Amen.